Welcome to another episode of Two D's and an F. I'm your host, Jay Gellis, and always with me is my co-host slash producer, magic man behind Dunn Sound, Mr. Mike Dunn. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> uh, tonight, we have a very special episode, um, and do you know why, Mike? Because it's our very first episode on our new platform, the Might Be News Network. That's right. I had to fucking, I had to go back to the dollar store to get the ones that blow and make a noise, uh, <laughs> because I originally got the the fucking frog tongue thing that doesn't um, make it. I thought it did, but it doesn't. Yeah. What, what so yeah, the- we're 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 going to the to the might be news. We'll be on there. We'll still be on our um, normal, uh, uh, you know, uh, YouTube, know, Spotify's channel. Yeah. and YouTube's. Yeah, we'll still be on all, all that stuff. Pandora. Um, under two D's and an F, but we're also going to be added to the might be news. And, um, they also have, um, you know, alongside of might be brews, uh, might be sports, might be tunes. Um, uh, we might have to change our name to might be two D's. I don't mm. know. No, I don't, I don't think so. No, that's not going to happen. Might be, might be dudes. Might be dudes. <laughs> <laughs> might be an F. I don't yeah. know. Now uh, we're not going to do that, but um, yeah, we're we're pretty happy about it. And um, thanks to uh, Taylor and Jackie Cooper to, for uh, having us on their having us aboard their uh, their shindig. So, uh, all right, well let's get let's get into the episode. All right, Faraz. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks for having having me. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. Um, so, uh, you are an electrical engineer, and you are from um, Pakistan. That's right. Did you become an electrical engineer in Pakistan, or did you get your studies over in the United States? No, I actually became an electrical engineer in Pakistan. Did my undergrad there in electrical, electromechanical, then came to the States. Uh, did my master's in uh Major was project management and minor was electrical. What what was what would you say um, the schooling system was like? The difference between the two of them, the schooling in in Pakistan and versus the schooling <laughs> in the United States. Oh, in Pakistan, they beat the shit out of you. Oh yeah, dude. I I, I knew you were gonna say that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's an obvious answer. Yeah, now it's like the one fucking thing we don't put fun funding into is our schooling, you know. Yeah, now they actually be yeah. So in, in Pakistan, you're supposed to pretty much know everything bef- by the time, even before you go into undergraduate school. But in the states, it's fine. I mean, if you know, you know. If you don't, that's fine. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like lazy. <laughs> We're fucking lazy. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it lazy, but it's just what it is. Like, uh, I guess out there, the way I've seen it, especially youngsters, they kind of feel more entitled to stuff rather than the way I've been yeah. taught. We uh, we set the bar so low that if you succeed, it looks that much better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can so I, I I went on uh, I went online today and I looked at I looked for who living in the United States is from Pakistan. That's famous. Uh, I never did that. And it was, it was all engineers and, um, um, professors and, and some doctors and shit like that. It's like everybody in Pakistan and, and, and India are fucking smart as shit. Mm-hmm. And we're all stupid over here. And I think, I think I came up with a reason why I came up with a theory. Why? Uh, huh. um, Here's my theory. Um, in the United States, like if you were to start school in the United States, it might have been a different story for you because all you're looking at is titties and ass in school. You're not really fucking caring about your studies too much over here. As an American, over in Pakistan, you have um, like it's more you have the t- traditional Pakistani dress, uh, the veils. And uh, I mean, I don't know how westernized it is over there right now, uh-huh. um, or even back then when you went to school. <coughs> um, but you know, the the women are more covered. You know. Now, 
I, I wouldn't agree with that. So, the, the, no, <laughs> that, so that was just a theory. Just a theory. So now let, let me tell you why. One of the main reasons why I'm an engineer. Yeah. So in Pakistan, the way in Pakistan, India, the way it works is if there's a it's, if it's a boy, he has to be an engineer. If it's a girl, she has to be a doctor. There's no other way. Oh wow. Yeah. So really? I'm, I'm not joking. Like for me, it was different. Like my parents kind of realized uh, it, when it came to me, they, they were like, okay, yeah, whatever you want to do. But back in the day, especially people who are like, you know, in their fifties, for them, if you're a guy, you need to be an engineer. And it was just supposed to be two divisions. If you're a good student, you're supposed to be a mechanical engineer. If you are a crappy student, you're supposed to be electrical. That's it. Well, that's the complete opposite in the United States. Right. So that's that's <laughs> why you find a lot of many people who are just doctors and engineers. Yeah. Wow. So that's wild. So it's like you're you're forced into it. You're by your by your family basically. It's like, but over here in the United States, it's like. I don't know, kid. Do whatever you want. I'm gonna go drink some beer. No, nah, yeah, it's definitely not, not like that. <laughs> like my my brother, he yeah. ended up studying uh, production, media production. So, like he did his undergrad in media production. So for him, like just coming up with the idea that oh, I'm gonna do this, he had to face some. He did have to face some resistance from the family. It wasn't too much, but you know, yeah. just like oh shit. So it's like. That's like an artsy thing. So it's like, so is art being like an, a student of art over there isn't really a big thing? Oh, no. A student of art is pretty much, uh, let's say if you go back 15, 20 years ago, it was just for the girls who, could, who couldn't do anything. Wow. So, hmm. yeah, I mean, that's precisely the reasons you find human doctors and engineers. But, so I is, mean, it, is, is it, it more of a... Um, like a social or um, kind of culture thing that that to attain these positions, or is it more directed towards not necessarily government, but um, like it's decreed that you have to pursue yeah, these I, specific? I think it's more of a social because in Pakistan, India, there's a lot of competition going on just among the families, like you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, like one of the, like, if he talked to any Pakistani or Indian person and asked him, like, hey, have you ever heard your parents compare you with some other kid? Yeah, every person would say, yeah, a hundred times, a million times. So that's more of a socioeconomic thing where okay. you have to be better than the neighbor you're living next to. <laughs> or, oh, wow. I mean, that's kind of like the, you know, that's kind of like here. I mean, everyone, it's like a competition in, in, in certain ways, um, you know, and that's what so, it, society makes it that way. Right. I feel, Yeah. you know, but like, so is society over there kind of the, the same way? Like it, it forces you to act or, or think a certain way. Yeah. I mean, now, I mean, you know, and right now it's not as brisk. As a strict as it was back in the day, maybe going 15 years back. But yeah, now you can do something that's not the regular norm. But yeah, back in the day, or, you know, maybe when my dad was in school, because uh, he's an engineer himself. So, so of course. yeah. Well, he had to be. Yeah, he had to be. For him, he had to be. <laughs> like, for me, I had a couple of options. But it had to be engineering. So. Well. Is that it because is, uh, maybe is that because of like the the Western um, persuasion maybe on the Middle East like the like like women are starting to dr dress down a little bit more they're not they're you know maybe they're showing some arm or <laughs> leg or whatever I wouldn't know. say something like that but yeah I mean definitely back in the day people didn't know about any other, any other thing it was just like. Just a couple of things in the end, that, that was it. So, you know, uh, like once we started kind of progressing, it started getting into the point where you were like, yeah, I mean, th that kind of thing also started happening, like, you know, where people, would, people started dressing more, if you would say, Western or modern. I mean, 
back in the early 2000s, that wasn't as much open, uh, you know, mm-hmm. dress, dressing the Western way, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but now that's pretty common. Uh, so I think it was more yeah, I... of the exposure because back in the day, there were just a couple of TV channels. There wasn't much internet out there. And okay. that, that yeah. was it. So, you know, you just, you, you're, the information that you were getting or the options that you could see were just limited to what they wanted. Yeah, it's to not, it's not like, it's not like you had, had a cover, like the women had like a cover of Vogue magazine to like, kind of be like, I want to look like that. You know what I mean? Exactly. It was just like, and, and I, I, it was like that on purpose. I'm sure just like there's walls around a lot of the towns. I don't know if it's like that in Pakistan, but it's like that in Saudi Arabia and, and Qatar. Um, you know, walls around the town, so other people can't see into the town, so women could maybe dress down a little bit or something like that. Yeah, I mean, all that kind of stuff was more to be done inside the four walls. I mean, uh, they couldn't do much on the outside. Right, yeah. And that was, again, kind of dictated um, by the religion and the culture as a combination. Do you see more, like, American food like like American food establishments uh, popping up more and more over there? Uh, as an American teen, uh, yeah, they're coming up. Uh, they're f- because it says, as soon as you start getting, you know, once you start eating that, you're going to have to change the way you dress because your clothes aren't going to fit anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to fit anymore. Well, they, it's, a, it's a veil. It's a, it's, a big, it's a big... Even so. You know, it's like a moo moo. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, they did start popping up. Uh, yeah, but it took a while before. They started plumping up. <laughs> yeah. That, that's how they are right now, because that's one thing that we're good at. We just eat. So, like. Hey, more cushion for the pushing for us. I know. <laughs> that's right. That's what we go with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you're you're actually get, you're getting married to a Pakistani woman, right? Yeah, at some point. I don't. Yeah, um, and this is not like you haven't even really met her yet. No, actually, I did. Oh, you have met her. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. No, but it's like it's not. It wasn't your choice, though. You said I think you were telling me it was like, a, or maybe it was your choice in in, in certain ways, but she kind of got picked for you. Yeah. So like, so the way the. The, fam- uh, the family background that I come from, it's more of a, you could say, that modern fa- background <laughs> or a modern family life- lifestyle thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I was given the option of both. Uh, I was asked, like, okay, if I have someone, I need to let them know. And I was like, eh, no, I don't have anyone right now. But then in our culture, the age is a big factor because uh, for some reason, you're supposed to get married by... 30 or else it's something bad so oh, that's weird yeah i mean it's just a cultural thing for some reason the thing that you yeah. have to get married before 30 but that could be like a social thing maybe yeah that's just i like, think oh your son's your son's not married yet or something like that yeah that's more like what, what's he a whore what's he doing yeah so what's he doing out, slutting it up out there <laughs> yeah that's more like <laughs> that so, all around town. Yeah. yeah sorry what, what was it mike oh nothing Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean, for in my case, yeah, I was given the option when I didn't have any, any anything going on on my end, and they were like, "Okay, we'll pick someone for you." So I was given an option, and I had my say. It wasn't as if I was forced to do it, but yeah, right. I did have my say, but I was like, "Yeah, whatever." Yeah, I mean, if uh, you're, I mean, I, be like, I don't, I don't have anything else going on. Make it happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, and 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 you've met her, so I mean, obviously, you have to find some attraction there or whatever, right? So, uh, it's not like you were just like, it's not like you met a cow and you were like, uh, yeah, I guess, <laughs> right? You, this this is potentially, I mean, this is the woman that's going to feed your need, right? If you will. Um, do you is she more? Is she more westernized or is it like uh, because you live here? Are you going to have to go over there and marry her and have a ceremony over there? And then is she going to come back here with you? Oh, uh, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, so and will that be a little weird for her? Like, is she more is she more westernized or is she going to be covered the whole time? So define westernized like when you say westernized. Well, OK, so um, I'm not, like not wearing cowboy boots, but 
you know, maybe a uh, rock and a t shirt. Yeah, she does that. She does. She does that okay. even in practice. Does she now. still? Does she still wear a uh, what's it called the hijab or no? Uh, the no. Okay. Did you say oh, she well has then, a tramp fuck, stamp? Yeah, she's, okay, she's Western. Yeah. <laughs> does she have a tramp stamp? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you said she has a tramp stamp. A tramp yeah, stamp. Not, that's uh, that's what okay. sluts get on their on their backs. No, no, she doesn't have uh, any of that. Oh, but okay. that's good. Okay. Um, no, yeah. If she's rocking a t-shirt, um, and and she's not wearing the the, the, the face cover, then she's you know, she's, I would say that's westernized. You know, it's not. It's 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 breaking away from that that Middle Eastern tradition because, and I say Middle Eastern because it is everywhere in the Middle East. Um, I guess is it does it have to do with your religion? Is it does it have to do with like if you're Muslim? Yeah, or, I mean um, to a certain extent it does, but like religion doesn't tell you to cover yourself all the way up, like you know, just like a plastic cover. You shouldn't be wrapped in something that no one can see you except your eyes, or not even the eyes, you know. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean that that does happen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that it, does you... happen. So I think that has to more. That ha- that more has to do with kind of culture. So it's kind of a combination of both. So religion had okay, it. It's like old school, maybe. I personally think it's it, like an uh, old school. Yeah, thing? for me, uh, uh, I definitely go go with old school. Okay, well, I mean, maybe it's not something a little bit to do with with religion and a little bit to do with like just tradition, right? Like old school tradition. Yeah. yeah. Because I think uh, what happened was the religion, at a, to a certain extent, does ask women, women to cover. And at the same time, the culture was doing the same thing. So both of them got combined. And instead of staying at the same level, it kind of got amplified too much. Where it turned out that, oh, you should be covered to an extent where no one can even see your eyes. You know? Yeah. I mean, there there is there is something beautiful about that. Like just holding on to that like um i, I don't know it, it, it's just like a it's just like a, a a way of life like a quality of life like um just just holding on to that like culture past type thing you know where where you know it, here you know in, in america it would never it you know it would last a couple of years and then people would forget about it and then we, we would move on. We're constantly moving on to new things. Um, we know, we don't really like like back in World War Two era, like 1940s era w- was completely different than it is right now. You know, the way kids act acted um, and the way the parents treated the kids. Um, I don't know. Th- there's just there's something like symbolic about it. You know, uh, I feel that way about about the way women dress in, in the Middle East, like just holding on to that is, 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 it's something special. It really is. Oh yeah. I mean, it does give it a distinct look and, you know, just by itself, but yeah, I mean, you're right over time, like, especially, especially with the newer gen- generations. Uh, yeah. It's definitely going to phase out and not even just in, in the States. That's what kind of ha- is happening back in Pakistan or India as well. Yeah, explain a little bit about that. Like, so Pakistan was India, right? They they were one country yeah. at one time. The British took over a part of it, or something like that. Yeah, so go back. Can you explain? So Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh were actually one country. So <clears throat> essentially, it was the subcontinent. So the continent was the Asia by itself, and then there was a subcontinent because it was a whole chunk of land in itself which turned out to be a subcontinent. Originally, there, you had the, the Genghis Khan uh, and then the Mughals. So those were like huge di- dynasties back in the day, which lasted, I think, 800 years. And then the British came in. They lasted another 300 years. And when they eventually left after the World War II, it was pretty much at the yeah. well, at, by the time the World War II was over, there was too much was going on in that region. Like the Muslims were fighting with the Hindus and uh, and with the Sikhs and everything, and British were trying to figure out the aftershocks from the World War itself. So they were trying to get out of the area region. So to do that, they simply figured out a way that okay, we're going to split the region. 
So one chunk of land is for is a Muslim ma- majority, and the other one would be a Hindu majority. Yeah, but they put up they put up like a, a fence, like a like a barbed wire fence down the whole line. Like some British lawyer guy made a line, and and they put up that fence, and it split families apart. Yeah, it did because uh, you gotta you gotta remember like that's pretty much so. Just take the United States, all right? And then uh, what you have is okay, someone someone is someone comes in and say this is the borderline, and you got some of your forks living on the other side. People started moving back and forth at the, at the time of the partition in 1947. But then the the chaos and the war went so much they actually had to put in in an actual fence in between the two countries just to stop people yeah. people from moving across the borders. Yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of crazy. Well, uh, actually, if you go on Google, I think it's one of the most split up uh, borderline in any, yes. between any yep. countries. Yeah, you could see it from space. Yeah. I mean, there's so much lightning all over the place. <laughs> yeah, that, that's crazy, man. I I, uh, I was doing a little bit of research on it. Didn't, I did not know that about, you know, Pakistan. Um, I kind of I knew it was kind of part of India. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know that it was divided to the point where families were separated. Oh yeah, it was. And it, so you, I mean, you could have family living. Do you ever do Twenty Three and Me or, or uh, like one of the one of the one of the ancestral dot com or whatever the hell it is? I mean, you could have family living in uh, India. Oh, I'm pretty sure. I, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, it's just that I've never went into that. I was like, I've never met yeah. them so far. I'm not planning to meet them. Yeah, I mean, is there like, is there some kind of like hatred between the two now because there is a border there? I mean, so th- there's th- there was hatred, but it wasn't because of, of the border. The border actually came up because of the hatred. So, like before d- before uh, 1947, you know, before the World, World War II ended, there was hatred between the Muslims and the Hindus. So, and they were killing people left and right just because, oh, shit, this guy was Muslim, so he has to die. Or, you know, this guy is Hindu, he has to die. Both parties were doing the same thing. So when they actually did the partition and people were moving across the border, or, you know, people were actually moving to from one side to the other, there were people from either sides that were not accepting this idea. So... Like, for example, if you talk to my grandparents, they would tell you that they, they lost their brothers during just traveling from one side to the other because people were so frustra- frustrated with that everything going on. They were just killing people left and right. So, and I think yeah, uh, it's per some documentation, uh, just between that transition, I think at close to 200,000 people died just in the subcontinent region. Jeez. Yeah, that's wild. It kind of reminds me of like it's North Korea and South Korea, like how they, you know, how that they got divided. Right. And, uh, there's that constant battle going on. But I don't think I mean, Pakistan and India, they're not. Are they fighting today? Not exactly fighting. But, yeah, you, you hear about shit happening every once in a while. They do like competitions or something oh, yeah. like that. It's like they do. Uh, I watched a video on YouTube of uh, part of the border between. India and Pakistan, where they have uh, the guards that are like face to face with each other pretty much every day on both sides. They do this like ceremony at the end of the day of like the changing of the guard. Yep. It's like yeah. really, it's like super, it's at, like they have to be organizing that on both sides. It's, it's like they're working together to make this, this like fantastic. It's like a competition world. though. Yeah, one it's, sees it's, one <laughs> does like doing that, like, well, fuck you. We're going to do that better. Instead of fighting, so, they put together like a whole dance routine. Yeah, that's I mean, awesome. that, but that's the same thing as the North Korea and South Korea. <laughs> yeah, but, war, but that's like, the difference. North Korea could go off at any time. Like, yeah. So, Mike, I know exactly what you're talking about. That place is in Lahore. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one of the cities. So it shares yeah. a border with, with India. So that's called the Pakistan Gate and India Gate. But mm-hmm. apart from that, there's a whole border line that we share with India. So on that on that specific border section. It's pretty cool. Like I've been out there. Yeah, you could see like them organizing the whole thing. 
But yeah, is that where the golden is that where the golden palace and then there's like another palace, but it was like once it once it was the same religion and they used to travel back and forth. Uh I don't know. I don't remember there's like, any there's, golden golden palace. It, well in India there's like a, a a golden I don't know what they're called. Is it is it called a mosque or something like that? Golden mosque? Mosque, maybe. Uh-huh. I don't know. But it's where people went, like religious people went, and then across the border, which is now Pakistan, people used to travel to this other <laughs> um, religious place. Um, oh but yeah! Then when they put that border up, they they couldn't they couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. So in Pakistan, there is one uh, religious place for the six. And we still get like many sex, uh, like Pakistan's head of a special time of a year that they have to come yeah. in and uh, they get a special per- permissions and everything that only a certain number of people can cross the border just for that specific thing. And from India, from India. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Hinduism is, uh, or Hinduism or Sikhism had, did have roots in the subcontinent. So because of the roots, m- many of their religious sites are based in, in the region. And, you know, once everything was split up, you know, physically, there is some stuff that's still on this side that they need to come in and visit the place. Okay, but I mean, it's not like it's not like there's no I mean, there's not there's no hate there. They just come and they because of religion, they're the same religion, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there is hate. Like, you know, if I apply for an okay. Indian visa, a wizard visa, I'm pretty sure I won't get one. Just because, like, they'll be like, well, wow. why the fuck you want to come in? Like, you know, just mainly because yeah. of that. Or we would... So you can't, can you visit? Can you visit India? I mean, you can, but you got to prove, you got to prove yourself the main reason why you need to come in. Like, and that's the same thing for any Indian wow. trying to visit Pakistan. You got to, because the way we think, uh, like, people back there think is, uh, like, every Pakistani going to India is, is supposedly a spy. And every Indian coming to Pakistan is a spy. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be like those fucking Canadians coming into our country. They're all yeah. fucking spies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, recently, <laughs> I think last year, the year before, India actually caught, caught a pigeon from Pakistan. I'm not joking. It, it was all over the news. So wow. there was a pigeon that flew in from, uh, like, like pigeon is a bird. I mean, it's going to fly over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was on the news. Yeah, that was. A, if you Google it up, they actually <laughs> caught the pigeon because some some soldiers saw the pigeon crossing the border, and he thought that pigeon that was a like that was some kind of drone or something. Pigeon spy. Yeah, pigeon wow. spy. So th- that was a whole thing, <laughs> and we were kind of making fun, you know, for the Indians. Like, oh shit, you, we don't even need to do anything. You guys are just scared of, of the pigeons. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, we do weird shit. Uh, yeah. You know, is, pa- is, Pakistan is in a weird place, man. Um, you got, you have India to, what's it, to the, I guess if you're looking at a map to the right, mm-hmm. which which is kind of your enemy. And then you have to the north, Afghanistan. And then you have to the left, Iran. So it's like Pakistan's like just smushed. It's like, it's like a, it's like a big sandwich in the Pakistan's like the meat in the middle and they're just getting smushed in there it seems yeah I mean yeah. usually I mean to be honest we don't get much uh, prob- many problems f- from the Iranian or the Afghanistan side it's usually the Indian side that we have to be usually careful about yeah that's 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 wild yeah yeah no, India is is extremely densely populated is is Pakistan like by you know by size comparison is it as densely populated as India I mean it is but it is not as much as India is mm-hmm because so they're like India right now is in bad shape with COVID. Like they have yeah, yeah. so many people dying and like, no, I don't know yeah, what, I don't their, think, what their healthcare system is. is I don't is think like Pakistan is though. I don't think they're really in that bad of a, sh- that bad of shape. I mean, not as bad as India. you like, you don't hear anything about Pakistan. Oh no, definitely. I mean, uh, we were, I mean, the government was kind of thinking at one, 
one point that we might get hit as hard as India was. But yeah, now India is like recently, because I think they somehow the COVID thing developed its own strain, Indian strain. Yeah. Uh, so none of the vaccines were working and all that. And because of the uh, the class difference, especially in terms of, you know, economical class differences, because India and mm-hmm. Pakistan both have a more private based, uh, what do you call it? Health healthcare system. So if you have the money, you get you get the thing. If you kind of wait for the government to provide it, good luck. So <clears> like <throat> the whole the whole like caste system is 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 involved with access to healthcare. Uh, if you're talking about the the econom- economical caste system, yeah, then it is like you know. Okay. Like if you're wealthy, you can get the health benefits. Uh, if you don't have the money. Yeah. Oh, it sucks for you. I mean, you you could wait in, wow. in the line for the well, you know at the government hospital. So, I think that was one of the major re- re- reasons why India was hit a lot more. So first they were densely populated. Plus the government wasn't prepared as much. I mean, not just saying that the Indian government wasn't. I mean, so was the pa- Pakistani government. Well, I'm pretty sure that, well, like they're they're doing the same thing. I think uh, pretty much the entire planet was caught off guard with this this fucking thing. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Some some were able to catch up better on it; others just weren't. Yeah, so. I mean our our healthcare system sucks as well. I mean it's we we have access to pretty much anything, but it you can bankrupt yourself to to get something you need to stay alive, like a, a bag of of sterile salt water saline is eight hundred dollars in a hospital. Yeah. You know? And it's oh cool. yeah, yeah. And yeah, Americans bed, complain like I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna go to I'm just gonna go to Canada for healthcare. Like, yeah, have fun waiting three years to get what you need. And yeah. yeah. And the, their their healthcare system is shot too. Yeah. Um yeah, it's I mean there's no there's no point in being becoming a, a spending all that money to become a doctor if you're not gonna make it back. So, how do you make it back? You gotta charge the money. Exactly. Right? So that's how it works. Yep. And if it doesn't pay well, there's no incentive for for people to do it. Right. But yes. Right. Unless like, the government's that... gonna start printing that money again. Yep. <laughs> which they've been doing for a while. Oh boy. But I mean, then it's not worth anything anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's Hopefully, my out. my uh, cryptocurrency investments pay off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. I heard they're going down. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. It's it's yeah. it's going up and down a little bit. It's been holding steady uh, the last week or so, but yeah, Dude, it's it's wild. Tesla is where it's at. Like I I'm I wish I would have got into it a couple years back, but it's I mean it's never too late because it's only going to keep going up. Everybody, I I see at least three to four Teslas a day. I don't live in a city. I live in the country. You know, the, everyone's getting a Tesla. If you don't, you know, if you don't have a tr- if you don't want a truck, I mean, the, you can get Tesla truck, but I mean, that's probably a pretty penny. Yeah. I mean, you can get a Tesla for a little over forty grand, and that that thing will last you, you know, maybe forever, or at least you know the battery mm. might go for ten, ten to fifteen years, and you got to spend maybe ten grand on a new battery. But that's not that bad. Ten to fifteen years, ten, every, uh, ten grand every every ten to fifteen years. That's really not yeah. that bad. Yeah, I mean, and plus there's essentially yeah. no other maintenance costs. Look at. Right, there's no maintenance cost. Look, look at fuel. Uh, how much fuel is today? I mean, it's almost four dollars a gallon. Think about what it's going to be in ten years. Oh, definitely. You know, you, you know, you, you could save your money right there. I think Tesla is going to be. I think it's a really good investment. Oh yeah. Now, and actually, if you like, for example, if you just go to a Tesla dealership, they actually give you like they ask you how much you drive and all that. They, and they actually give you numbers with it, like, you know, if you drive th- these many miles, you you would pay off the whole car with it. And I think that yeah. with it, if, I think if you're driving like 50 miles a day, you would pay off the car within, uh, I think that was like seven years. And then you're pretty much just enjoying the car for free. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's got to be their selling point, you know? Yeah. And which is. It has to be. Plus, plus like. You know what happens when cars are driving themselves? 
Do you want to be left out? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. You I dr- I drove a uh, I drove a Tesla Model S. I think it is like the like the highest series there oh, is. Oh yeah, is, is it the, S? the zero to, zero to uh, sixty Ooh, in two boy. seconds? Dude, that's that shit is no joke. Oh, I yeah. um, drove it. The, this guy, he was. It looked like he was living in it. Honestly, like the inside <laughs> was all dirty. It was a brand new car. This, this dude was a super hippie, but um, he let he let me drive it. Uh, in like the backwoods of like Gladwin where it's all twisty and turny and pretty dangerous. But yeah, in literally <laughs> two seconds, you're at like 80 miles an hour and it, it's, yeah. you're like back in your seat. They're fun to drive, yeah. but I, I don't think Teslas are really built to last, man. I don't know. You don't really. No, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they have like, I think they come with like a four year, four year warranty, eight year powertrain warranty yeah, or something we'll like that. We'll see. You know, so but I thought on model model uh, model S, uh, the, their main selling point because I, I was watching a video about it, their main selling point was that the car would not flip in any condition, which usually mm-hmm. the SUVs are kind of prone to. But model S, since it was kind of a SUV class, but the design was so that even if anything were to happen to the car, let's say if it got T boned or anything, it would end up land, landing up on its wheel so that was yeah, the whole that, whole like design yeah pretty much like a cat. fucking car a cat yep. that's the idea that was the idea i mean i haven't seen one i don't know if it's actually yeah, gonna i don't know how that works i mean i i think i think i mean the whole thing behind tesla is the technology and everything is already programmed into the vehicle it doesn't matter what model you get oh yeah it's it is. just unlo- unlocking the shit right yeah it yeah. is cause... so like it so like if you if you wanted that if you wanted that like um that auto drive or something like that you just you know you got to unlock it or whatever if you got the lower end or whatever and yeah you can um, you can program it all from an app that you can disable the like super boost when you hit the gas and and unlock it if you want to you know go fucking fast no the, the not even is, that not even that like when they build when they give you a car they give you the car with everything on it. Like you might not even yeah. have those fe- features, but physically those features are, are on those cars. Like I know someone yeah, yeah. who has a Model Model 3 and he recently got an email from Tesla that if he want to turn the back seats into like heated seats, all he had to do was pay 3,000, yeah. three grand. Yeah. And he did that and they were like, oh yeah, just plug the car in uh, like for the night. And the next morning, everything was right, good to go. Like he didn't have to go uh-huh. to the dealership to get anything done, so everything yeah. was in there was just locked up. Like there was a factory yeah. lock on it. Yep. Yeah. It's just the, wild, man. The most yeah. jarring thing about driving it, though, is that the the dude was like, the thing about Teslas is you'll never have to replace the brake pads because you don't really use the brakes at it all. It breaks what, by what, itself, once, right? Yeah. yeah once like it, retards, once you let right? off, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever. Once you called. let off the gas, it just it. Just it's like a VFD just, in there or some down, shit, yeah. for us. Yeah, it That's is. Really weird. That's what like it a, is. Of uh, a variable frequency drive in that motherfucker. Yeah, it's a. It's just ramping, ramping down the hertz. Yeah, that's <laughs> essentially what it what it is doing. Plus, it yeah, reach yeah. and drive. Yeah, and like the the because it's electric, it it just has that torque. Like immediately, there's no. There's no, the fuel has to go from here to nope. here, and this has to open to let the fuel through. It's fucking, boom, so simultaneously, dude. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's fast as fuck. Dude, it, if, I'm waiting for SpaceX, um, uh, Elon Musk's uh, space company, I'm waiting for that to go public with stock. I want to get in on that. But like, mm. That's like a long-term stock. It's like, you know, they're, they're trying to send people to Mars. I don't know. Maybe I'll see that in my lifetime. But if I do, fucking, I'll be rich. You know. Oh yeah. Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't start off. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't start off high. The stock price. Oh, I mean, not it, a lot it, of the people is. are going to want to invest in it. Now, I, I, well, I don't think everyone uh, would. By the time, by the time he goes I public, because think about it. Right now, anything Elon Musk says, anything anytime, it's affects the whole yeah. stock market. So imagine Dogecoin, yeah, Dogecoin, (laughs) Tesla, anything. So imagine when it goes public with SpaceX, yeah, people are gonna go crazy over it. Yeah, but the the dude's not gonna live forever, and as soon as he goes, there goes the stock. 
He's just gonna clone himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe he'll put he'll he'll put that fucking chip in his head that he that yeah. he's creating. Yeah. No, dude. Yeah. Like all the hype around it is is gonna make when when they do the space SpaceX IPO. You know, it's it's immediately yeah. gonna be fucking through. I the don't roof. think it's gonna be high at first because where's the? Ha, ha, I mean, I don't because it's gonna be a long time until we put anybody on mars or maybe if we put like one or two people on mars great they're mm-hmm. not going to live i mean even if one or two people live there it's not like a bunch of colonies are going to be moving to mars in our lifetime no so like there it's not going to be that i don't think that stock's going to be worth anything uh you know? as of february 2021 spacex is valued at 419.99 per share for uh Oops. they don't <laughs> hold on a second they have a stock now uh, I don't think they have a stock, but no, you're looking at Tesla. No, no, I'm looking at the SpaceX. I mean, it is a private okay, so private they're company. They're just basic, private. Yeah, they're just yeah. basing it off. Gotcha. Like wow. you said, it's, it's a seventy. There. It's a seventy-four billion dollar company. So based, yeah. they're just kind of estimating that you know, if it were a public, it would be four hundred and twenty bucks a stock. I mean, Tesla's at like five or six hundred right now. I think. I think it dropped down to 550 recently. Maybe it picked back. Buy, 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 (laughs) buy. Twenty bucks, maybe. Buy, buy. I'll I'll cash out my Doge coin and buy seventeen shares of Tesla. (laughs) Jesus Christ, dude! (laughs) How much fucking Doge coin did you invest in? Did you put the Um, fucking family the nest egg in there? No, not at all. No, I put in. I think. (laughs) I think total probably close to two thousand. Wow. When it when it was at when it was at I think eight eight cents, maybe less. Maybe what do you like so you're up you're you're up right now. What are you up? What are you at now? Uh I don't know. April has the um the actual Is she like, the kingpin behind that too? Dude, yeah. April is April his April's his wife, by the way, for us. Oh, okay. She is the kingpin behind she's like the 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 person uh, that's like she, petting the cat she's behind the, the chair maker. that you can't see that's like turned around, she's like the fucking. She's, she's the, the king maker. Oh, she's the, the king maker. She she she's the one yeah. who gets the president elected. Huh. <laughs> hey, you know, that's that what, sh- that's that's sh- what that shadowy figure. That shadowy <laughs> figure. That's that's just yeah. off the stage right. Yeah. That's pulling all the strings. Yeah, yeah that's her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a figurehead. You're just a pawn. Yeah. You're like you're like a little puppet in her. You're yeah. a string puppet in her game. I go, I go on TV and and tell everybody <laughs> everything's okay. <laughs> Invest in Doge. Oh my god! All right. That's so what, what else? Uh, what else? What else do you want to talk about? What what side of the dri- what side of the road do they drive in in uh, Pakistan? <laughs> oh, right hand side, like everyone else. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. So um, wait, hold on. Right hand side. No, that's we drive on the right hand side. Wait, I lost you. You mean left hand? Your mic cut out. Yep, there you are. Okay. Do you mean the left hand side? No, no, the right hand side. I think only only England and one other place drive on the left side of the road. And um, wait, wait, wait. (laughs) All right, hold on. Most of the country drives on the uh, left hand side of the road, or most of the most of the world. I mean. Oh yeah, drive on the left hand side of the road, but the driving seat right hand drive. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Opposite so, of the post office trucks mm-hmm. here. No, no. The the right side of the the right no. side of the car. The right side of the post office. The, the same as the post office truck. Yeah, truck, the same, same but as the post office. Different side of the road. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I honestly <laughs> think it makes more sense. Why is that? Uh, it just it feels better because I'm I'm right-handed like most people um and I I think shifting with the left hand is easier and steering you have more control cuz I'm cuz you're right, you know, who if I don't know if you guys are both right-handed or not, but yeah. I am, so it's it's just easier to me to steer with I mean if you're going to drift, if you're going to drift Tokyo drift <laughs> into a fucking corner you want that right hand available to fucking do the spins, you know? Uh, I can see that. 
<laughs> yeah. I think we all might be a little too old to Tokyo drift it. I guess. I mean, I'd I think you're it, never I'd too old it, to I'd Tokyo drift. I'd give it another drift. shot if I was in the right car. I mean, dude, the cars in the Middle East, I don't know if you have them in Pakistan there for us, but like Saudi Arabia, I think is a big one. Like in these rich fucking countries over there, they've got like gold and chrome car, like Mercedes over there. And they're just, you ever see these videos where they're doing these fucking tricks where oh, they're oh, just yeah. like spinning around in circles and shit? They're yeah, going real out. fast, and they're just yeah, yeah. What is that? Is that like a game or something over there? Yeah, that's pretty much just a game for for them. Uh, oh, you should you should that's see crazy. the videos. You should see the videos. Where I they did. Just yeah, drive on two wheels, like they go in full speed, drift, and then just try to get straight. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. Like they tilt the car sideways and just like so it's actually driving on side two wheels in one line, and they just keep on yeah. going like that. I think they do that in Mexico too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because the roads are pretty big in Saudi Arabia and, and, you know, most of the Middle East. And people are rich, so they don't really care if they crash a car. They just get out of it. Yeah. Been... Dude, the fucking cars are, like, made of, like, silver and gold. Oh, yeah. Like, they... Have you ever been to uh, Dubai? I've been to. Oop, hang on, you were breaking up there. You say you've been there? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I mean, it, you can um, just go there and just walk around. You, you pretty much can't even buy anything. What What is their deal now? Because I know they hit some kind of uh, economic wall and a lot of construction stopped. And so there's like, you know, abandoned supercars. There's abandoned skyscrapers, like half built, like megaplexes. Like what, what happened? So I think that was more because of what everything was going on in the Middle East. And uh, mm-hmm. most of the labor force was coming from Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. So at one point, Dubai kind of created a kind of workforce restrictions for those people. So they weren't accepting anymore. And that's where all uh, the projects stopped because they didn't have the manpower uh, to continue doing the projects. But, and then the COVID came in, but I think now everything's picked back up again. Okay. Okay. So that was more yeah, of a, some kind wild. of political bullshit that was going on. Okay. Yeah, man, that place is, is fucking wild. But, like, if you travel there, like, if you travel there as an American, my friend went there, and he said the security um, screenings are in- extremely invasive. Oh, yeah, um, they are. Like, if, 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 they, if they suspect you're carrying something or, you know, they'll they'll – reach on inside of you oh yeah they wouldn't you know. mind those, cra- yeah, those cavity searches are reach, pretty common what do you mean reach inside of you what do you mean cavity like, searches like grab full your body dude they'll stick your fist they'll they'll stick they'll like rip open your butthole wow yeah i got i got pulled aside one time in an airport and it's because i had i had a uh, empty brass uh 762 shells in my bag um and that was, I think that was Korea. And they were like, what's this? And I was like, ah, I don't know, fucking, they're, I think they were from like my grandfather, uh, my great grandfather who was in World War II. They were shot at his funeral and I got a couple of them, you know, and I had them in my, uh, in my bag with me for some reason. And, and they took them and that kind of pissed me off. But, um, it's like, it was just like, what's this? It's like, that's an empty piece of brass. Like, what the fuck? Look inside of it. There's not. There's not a bullet in there. Yeah. And they took it. They took it from me anyway. But um, um, yeah. Never got. Uh, never got my my ass spread apart. That's a little yeah. weird. Dude, that would be scary as fuck to get detained at an airport in a country you've never been to, where they don't have like good human rights record. <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever watched any of those shows where it's like a. Uh, know a british or american couple that travel to the philippines somewhere and then somewhere along the way somebody hid like a whole you know brick of of fucking heroin in their (laughs) luggage and they got caught and they're thrown in a you know a a filipino prison for life did they did they really though or were they trying to smuggle that shit i mean did they really did somebody really put that in their bag unnoticed i mean that's kind of hard to 
I mean, you're going to notice that when you pick it up, I think. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That you know? shit would be scary. Just to have, like, anything in your luggage that you might not think is illegal in another country, but it turns out it's super illegal, and they have, like, yeah. no tolerance for it at all, and you just get thrown in prison. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, my two cents on that. Oh, good, good thing. Good thing for that two cents. Faraz. Mm-hmm. You're with us still. That's good. Um, you got you got anything else for us, Faraz? Not really. I'm uh, up to you guys. Yeah, I, I I mean I think we pretty much covered a lot um, that we wanted to cover. Um, um, appreciate you. I I really appreciate you coming on and sharing. Um, you know what it's like over in uh, pa- Pakistan and a little bit of the history there. Um, are and, are you uh, a U.S. citizen yet, or are you, are you in the process of of? No, I'm still in the process. Um, okay. Yeah, well, that's I how I told you, uh, Jay. I wish you, I wish you Godspeed and and uh, come on over. Yeah, I yeah, really, really appreciate you. that, man. <laughs> really need yeah, that. You're. Uh, yeah, and uh, I I uh, you know I I hope everything works out for you and you get your what you you know your white wife comes over and, and you guys have a ha- happy life over in uh, America and uh, just make sure she doesn't uh, look at too many Vogue magazines yeah I'll uh, try to make sure of that <laughs> <laughs> oh hot she's voting uh. <laughs> hey fun fact he started voting before you guys did you know that yeah <laughs> did you, the, 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 the females over there did Oh, yeah. I mean, we actually yeah. le- elected the first female president in 1993. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. We still don't yeah. have one. Yeah. So nope. I, we, we are we are fucking sexist over here. <laughs> yeah, we kind of beat, uh, yeah. We, we kind of be- beat you guys in that. Yeah. That's yeah, the only thing we kind of yeah. beat you guys in. <laughs> All right. So, I, I, I mean, think, when she I comes over, what, make sure she gets that. back in that fucking kitchen and cooks that dinner. And make sure it's on that table when you yeah. get home from work. <laughs> No, I'll try to make sure I think she that's... cooks some biryani. That's it. That's all I care about. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of Americans don't realize is that many, many, many other countries are way better and way more progressive at doing stuff than we are yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. and certain things. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree to that. Yeah, yeah. but, you know, just yeah. in the eco-social perspective, yeah, America is much better, but there are certain things that other countries have done. A lot before than even America is oh, thinking yes. about. Oh yes. Yeah, I mean we we all think we're the shit and we're we're the first ones to do it and uh, let's get some Bud Light. Woo. Yeah. It's like no. <laughs> I mean, and maybe my perspective on Americans is not right either, but uh, <laughs> that's just how right. I feel about that. We, we didn't really uh, start convicting people for for multiple DUIs until like 1971. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, hey, the cops like you're you're drinking. All right, well, yeah. just make sure you get home. Yeah, whereas in, like, okay. you know, Korea you get a or couple China, kids on the way. Yeah, whereas in, like, China, you get one DUI, you're dead. Fucking yeah. head <laughs> chopped off. Yeah. And apparently the worst license to get in is that's in Dubai. Because, uh, mm. like, from what I've heard, the earliest anyone has passed a driving license in Dubai, that's after, like, seven or eight events. Wow. Like that's, that's the wow, earliest. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy driving over there, right? Oh yeah, so they just you have to be a fucking you have to be on the offense or I don't know, I guess the offense all the time. Yeah, You're, yeah. no one's on the defense over there. It looks like. Oh, pretty much. So I think that's why they have the craziest <laughs> rules out there. Yeah. Well, we wish you wish you luck and uh, come back on when you're uh, when you're all good, and um, we'll talk some more. All right, awesome. Yeah, for well, us. thanks really for coming nice talk- on, man. No problem. Real nice talking to you guys. All right, bud. Take it easy. You too. All right. Bye. Right. And there it is. And for, yeah, he, he is a really, really nice dude. And, yeah. you know, um, I hope the best for him, man. He, I love that guy. He, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah I mean, I, that's, that shit is wild, dude. Like, fucking just, just – how different and like how how like how we perceive that side of the world isn't 
is maybe isn't the truth. Like it maybe isn't really how it is. You know. Oh no, dude. We're we're we fed. Think we think yeah. We're yeah. We're, we're fed all kinds of bullshit that we're supposed to believe about people who we don't share a common interest with. Like yeah, I mean, politically, we think we're better or, than everybody for or, some yeah. reason. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, where does that stem from? Where does that come from? I don't know. Maybe our parents, maybe and their parents, the government, and their parents, and their parents. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there there comes a time, and I think it's coming. I think it's. I mean, I think it is now. I mean, a lot of people are realizing the truth, um, and that it, it's almost like you have to break a country. You have to break someone down for them to realize. You have to break them down and build them back up. For them to realize uh, what's really going on out there. What's real yeah. good. It's real, real good. When countries stop being polite and start getting real. Get real nice. The real, real world. <laughs> 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 nah, uh, me. Oh, man. I don't know, man. I can't. I, I just think people aren't educated enough over here. They just, They just think. But they don't actually like do the research, or if they do, if they do the research, they're not looking in the right places. They're looking in like oh, there's so many fucking fake places out there to look, and so many opinions. Like, uh, you know, we I mentioned this about like the whole vaccine thing. Like, look at the facts, and then talk. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about it then. But um, yeah. So that's all I have to say about that. All right. Well, um, yeah, so first show on Might Be News Network for uh, any possible new listeners to the show. Thanks for sticking with us, though. Thank you. Yeah. It, was, it, was a, it was a good one. Uh, sorry for the audio quality. Hopefully Mike can fix it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, it would have been nice to, to have him here. He lives a little ways away from me. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, usually we have two people at uh, Jay's studio there and, and me like 70 miles away, but we make it work. <laughs> yeah. We make it work, we, and then we make it twerk. We make it <laughs> fucking we do, twerk. Uh, should we do uh, a 13th episode spectacular where we're both live in the same uh, same location? Ooh. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think 13, so. 13th episode spectacular. We'll Thirteen, so what? Now. So not twelve. Thirteen is no. that two weeks? So you're gonna be here in two weeks? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on. I'm going on vacation sometime in uh, I think the end of June and then in July again for like a week. So I'll probably. So we'll probably have to take. Well, I mean, we'll take some weeks off. I'm sure, but um. Yeah. I'm going um, away yeah, for we like definitely, a week should, in October. I don't know where I'm going though. It's a surprise. October. Yeah. Ah, is that your birthday? April, April, yeah. April planned a whole, whole vacation, and all the, you know, hotels are booked, flights are booked, and I have no idea where we're going, and she's she's not going to tell me. Can I take a guess? Uh, you can take a guess. Salem. Salem, Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> Salem, Massachusetts. Yeah. Have you ever been? To, you ever been there in October, dude? It's, it's yes. fucking wild, dude. And not, uh, I wouldn't put it under under the umbrella of interesting, but I do have a Salem, Massachusetts story of. It was crazy. We went to the the you know the house of the seven gables and the when we went to the witch museum, yeah. that big room that you go in. When me and April went in there, I got this just flash of, holy shit! I've been here before, but when. And it turns out, like, one of my very first memories when I started coming out of the ether of infancy into retaining memories was my family went on a small vacation up to Boston when I was, like, three, almost four years old. And we went to the Witch Museum. Oh, no For shit. For some reason, the inside of that room that was, like, stored in there. stuck in my head. Wow. And when we went in there, it was, I've been here. <laughs> So, wow. you know, again, not that interesting, but uh, relevant. No, I mean, that's wild. You don't really remember shit when you're three, and that's yeah. wild that that came back around. Yeah. Yeah, we, we I actually, we went there by, it wasn't mistake, but we went, it was it was coincidence rather than mistake. We, um, we were up in, um, I guess it was after the wedding. It was like kind of like, it was like, it was like a honeymoon, I guess you could call it, up in Bar Harbor. Bahaba. Uh, Maine, yeah. And um, 
we uh, on the way down, we, we were driving through Massachusetts and we decided to just go through Salem, not knowing anything was going on. And it turned out the streets were fucking crowded because there was the, you know, it was around leaf was peepers. A, well, you got the leaf peepers and then, and then there was a festival. There was the witch trial festival. Yep. Um, that uh, it was the beginning. It was like the maybe the second week, no, second week in in October or something like that. So it was like Halloween's coming up. Uh, the witch trial festivals were big things. So everyone's dressed up and everyone's walking the streets with beers and shit like that. You know, right next to where the graves were, um, where they buried the supposed witches that they hung. Mm-hmm. Um, which you know, or as it turns really out, cool. regular women, <laughs> regular people, yeah. <laughs> Who would have? Who would have known? Yeah. Um, but yeah, real, real cool event to to go to at least once. You know, everyone's dressed up like witches and shit like that, and walking around yeah. the streets having fun. I wouldn't yeah. bring kids to it, but you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe uh, you would. Yeah. Maybe no, me, would. me and Abe had yeah. a lot of fun up in Boston. We went to the that Cheers bar. Like the outside yeah. of it was the set of Cheers. We went there. Mm-hmm. They have a beer there that I th- I think they're they're closed now. They shut down, but they had a the best tasting beer I've ever had in my life was a red brick ale that is only served there. They don't produce it for anywhere else. You can't get it. And now you can't get it anymore anyway, because they're gone. But that was the oh, really? number one, most delicious, satisfying beer I've ever had in my entire wow. life. Was it, what kind of beer was it? Like a lager or was it like, it a... was like uh it was, it was a lager. Wasn't too heavy. It was, it was kind of like a, I would say like a mix between like an amber it was like an amber lager, sort of, but it was. Yeah. Uh, oh boy, was that tasty! It wasn't. It wasn't bitter. It wasn't hoppy, but it was. Wasn't like malty. It was. It was nice and wasn't too I light. I like, I like my malty it was, beers. It was, it was. It was just right. Just nice. Just right. It's just right. right. I like my malty beers, uh, especially like in the winter time, fall time. Mm-hmm. Uh, like IPAs, heavy IPAs. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't like. Uh, like I don't. I'm not like a Guinness guy. Or anything like that, like that dark. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I like, uh, I guess, hoppy beers. I guess you yeah. could say. Yeah, I, I was yeah. never really into pale ales or anything like that. Um, yeah. Victory made a good one called Dirt Wolf. Their fir- yeah. first release of that was really good, but then the I think second that was a double second IPA batch or... they did was super super hoppy and bitter, and I didn't yeah. like it. But whatever the, however they made it, the like the first release they did of it was really really good. My favorites, that, my favorites is Dogfish Head sixty minute, mm-hmm. or any of the minutes. I mean, sixty is my favorite. Once you start getting up there, like nineties, nine percent, and like, you know, one twenty, obviously twelve percent alcohol. That's like that's what I like to call sleepy time beer. You know, you I have got, a couple beers and you just want to go to sleep. <laughs> I got like the first the f- maybe it wasn't the first year, but early on when they first started making the one twenty minute IPA, and they're like, you can age it in your fridge, and it becomes even more alcohol so i've got like four of them and put them in my fridge and i had them there for probably like a year and then um i guess they ruined an entire year's batch of it so they didn't release it that year so people who had them and or wanted them were looking for people who were aging them in their fridge and buying them for like a hundred dollars a piece so i sold one of them and drank the other three (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow got, got real drunk off those yeah i mean there's there's like collectors like people collect those shits you know yeah. i mean i don't know i never got that into it i mean i love beer I, I love uh like if in the summertime i'm actually like used to be and now i've gone back to rolling rock huh. you know it, like in my teen days i was like a roll i liked rolling rock and that and like i hated it after that and like started drinking ipas and shit and i still like ipas but Summertime, dude, I love me a rolling rock. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. And then you have those, what are those grenades? Are those Heinekens or some uh, shit? Oh, Mickey's. Mickey's. Yeah. (laughs) Where it's like a a riddle under the cap. Yeah. Yeah. Do they still make those? I haven't seen those around. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm sure they do. Yeah, maybe. I drank uh, a rolling rock. Uh, Me and Jay Smoker went to a strip club in North Philly one day in the middle of the afternoon. I did not want to go at all. I hate strip clubs. Always have. And I just got paid. Interesting, Mike. So I had like a, (laughs) I had, you know, like a $700 paycheck and I had the day off 
and the smoker comes home. He's like, come on, bro. Let's go to, let's go to the fucking strip club up in North Philly. I'm like, no, dude, I really don't want to. He's like, come on, bro. I got you. I was like, all right. Entire paycheck later. And the sun was still out <laughs> when, when we left. I was, oh my God. Uh, the rolling rocks turned out to be, you know, $15 a piece. And I had oh, like wow. probably 11 or 12 of those. And Jay Smoker kept hitting me up for money so he could try to fuck the stripper. I'm like, dude, it's not going to oh, yeah, happen. Oh, like, yeah, like, works. Here. Yeah, like, here. Here's the money. <laughs> here you go. go Come go on, man. Gold. I almost got her, yeah. dude. Give me $20 more. Dollars. Come on, bro. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, you don't almost got it. You don't almost got it. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I miss that. I miss that motherfucker so much. Uh, he's just, he was just so silly and like his his character he was such a character yeah like he, he was the character you could make a cartoon out of that dude yeah you know? i might i might yeah you should you should <laughs> he was the character like yeah. he it's just like i never i never understood his personality um always 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 liked him but like never understood him in in certain ways hmm. you know it's like when he I don't know. It's like when you feel one thing from him, it could it could be something else. Like, is he my friend today? You know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if if he had like some kind of bipolar thing going on or something. But. No, no, no. He he um, he's a real sweet guy, and you know he'll have your back. But he can also put off a vibe that is very very like pushy kind of walk on, and, and walk, push on, on yeah. walk on like, eggshells around him yeah yeah but yeah yeah it was yeah. never anything sinister it was mostly he would just be pissed off at himself or whatever and then just projecting that onto whoever that but, seems to be that seems to be what's going on like that seems to be like the group of friends that we hung out with it's like we didn't have any jocks we hung out with we didn't have any like preppy kids or fucking um it, it was like all like it was all like kids like that just had like this like depressing kind of vibe coming yeah. off them, but still yeah. knew how to have a good time. You know? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and like some of our friends are still like that. Yeah. You know. Yep. You know. You know. I don't know what it is. Me. It's just the personality. We were like we were you know, like goth kids without the shitty without the goth with, without the shitty dress style and we yeah. knew how to fucking party and have a lot yeah. of fun but still be yeah. like morbidly depressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was us. Like it's like we it's like we we kind of like like we we knew the reality of being a teenager and it just made us pissed off at ourselves or something like that. So it's like, well, this is being a teenager. I guess there's nothing I can do about it yeah. or something. You know, it's like, I don't know. Weird. Yep. Yep. All good. Good times though. Yeah. And, and retrospect. Yeah, it was. I mean, we got, was, got in was. some trouble and some, some, uh, near life ending experiences, but you know, yeah. all in good fun. Yeah. I think we all did. I mean, I think we've all almost died. Oh yes. You know, um, I almost fell off the God, cli- a- cliff up in uh, Jim Thorpe, but uh, Glen Anoka. Holy shit! That I almost fucking fall straight off a fucking cliff to my death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, the waterfall. Uh, up way, up way past the waterfall. Like oh, really the rocks. Yeah, the like rocks up high, there. Real high up. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was in a, I was in a really bad car accident and sh- yep. should probably be dead. Um, and in fact, I thought I was dead. I, if, uh, I was on so much Percocet because of the pain, cause they had to dislocate my hip to get a rod inside my leg. Yeah. Um, I was in so much fucking pain that I was on, per- I was taking Percocets and you know, obviously you don't feel shit when you're on Percocets. Mm-hmm. There was times where I was by myself laying in my room in my, in my parents' house, no one around thinking, am I dead? Like, am I, is this death? You know, is this real life? It was, it was, it was, <laughs> it, dude. I'm telling you, it was real fucking scary at times. Yeah. Um, because because I saw pictures of my car, uh, and I, sh- I there's no way I should have made it out of that car. The fucking roof was caved into the seat. The steering wheel was into the seat. Yep. I got ejected from the car. That's the only thing that the only thing that saved my life was not wearing my seatbelt. That's I remember hearing that was that. The only reason you survived is because you weren't wearing your seatbelt, and the only yeah. reason that 
um, who was in the car with you. Scott survived, Davis is, is survived because, because he is, was. Because he was wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. 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 Wow. That, and that man. was up by um, Longquist's Second dad's Street. house. Yeah. Uh, and Emmaus, yep. that up, twisty, up the yeah. fucking mountain. A dangerous yep, yep, fucking yep, road. Yep. Real dangerous yeah. road. I actually got air and fucking went sideways, apparently. I don't remember yeah. any of it. I hit my head so hard, but. um. Whatever. You live and you learn. Some, I mean, yeah. some people do. Some people don't. I think yeah. I was, I think, I like to think as myself, uh, of myself as someone who lives and learns. I mean, I didn't, I don't drive drunk anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, some people do. Some yeah. people do that, that, that get DUIs. They get three DUIs or some people do that, you know, crash fucking car and maybe kill somebody and they still drive drunk after that. If I, if I killed, if I killed, uh, my passenger, I would have been immediately, I would have been thrown in jail for three years. Yep. Without question. Yep. Uh, so I probably yeah. wouldn't be where I'm at now. You know, the, that whole drinking mentality is like, why don't you just get a fucking, especially nowadays? Like, why don't you just get a fucking Uber? Why don't you just get a fucking yeah. like, no, fuck there was an Uber back then. For, I know, you know, but still you could, why don't you have someone pick you up or. Yeah. Just, well, that was just me being a fucking idiot saying, you know, I was getting ready to, I was getting ready to leave. I had a job lined up. I think it was in Louisiana or something like that. Um, through the military. It was a civilian job through the military. It was good pay. Um, and I think I was getting ready to leave in like two months. And I was like, fuck it. You know, I'm celebrating. Uh, I, and I think I was working second shift at Lutron. So I would get out of work at 11 o'clock, start fucking pounding them back, thinking I got to catch up to everybody, and then go hang out with people. Yeah. And, you know, I saw I saw Scott, and I said, you know, let's go for a ride. And my fucking Honda Civic, bro. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> fucking Honda. Yeah. That's what it sounds yeah. like, too. That's what it sounds yeah. like driving down the road. There were many, many occasions that I definitely should not should not have been behind the wheel. You know, yeah. it was a pretty regular thing for a while. And, like, dude, I've, I've, I've driven from Philly to Allentown, blacked out, like, partying yeah. in Philly, and then woke up in my car yeah. in, in Grant Nunn's driveway to his <laughs> mom. Wow. All knocking on my window... At, at the crack of dawn, I'm like, where? So you drove, you, you were on the turnpike. I, I guess. Probably going like 80 miles an hour. Probably. And <laughs> she she wakes me up and, and, and I put my seat up and I look and that driveway that goes in to like Grant's parents' house and then goes yeah. back to those apartments. Mm -hmm. There was a construction crew waiting for me to wake up and move my car because they were paving, <laughs> they they were paving over that driveway. What's that this morning. guy doing in his car? What's yeah. this fucking guy doing over here? Yeah. So uh, and and <laughs> I parked my car in the middle of of this, basically a road, you know, a private road, but still, and I just wake up to this full construction crew waiting for me to get my fucking drunk ass up to move my car so they can do their job. <laughs> I just picture a bunch of dudes in like white t-shirts with the sleeves rolled up with cigarettes in them with like yellow fucking hard hats on and shit just yeah. standing there waiting for you. This like fucking peanut guy. butter jelly sandwiches. This fucking asshole. This fucking guy. What's this fucking guy's <laughs> problem? Yeah. Oh my God. But yeah, it's like no, a, it's, like one guy's it's holding a, like a jackhammer. Yeah. Drinking and driving, man. That's, that's a whole like doing it a lot and convincing yourself that it's okay. It, yeah, back then, the back then, back then, I guess you fucking just, things you can do back then. You just you didn't care. I mean, you did to a certain extent. I mean, I've been pulled over more times than I can count uh, while I was drinking. And I had probably I had bottles in like behind my seat. Yeah. And and all you do is I had a routine. You fucking light a cigarette so they can't smell the alcohol. You make sure you're fucking when you're talking to the cop, you inhale it and you're, you're talking with smoke coming out of your mouth. When you're talking to the cop, <clears throat> like I had, I had this fucking thing down. Like in hindsight, it was just, it was stupidity. Yeah. Stupid. You know. Uh, but at least, you know, at least I can look back and, and like I, God fucking forbid, I didn't. I mean, I, I didn't hurt anybody, which was, you know, luck on my part probably. Yeah. Uh, or skill. <laughs> I'd like to say it was skill, but, you know. Yeah, I mean. It's, uh, we, we were ruthless. Let's just yeah. leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah, we did a lot of stupid shit. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of a lot of people do. You yeah. Know. <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, don't drink and drive, kids. Don't drink there's, and drive. Lots, lots, and lots of options nowadays to avoid it. Yeah. You, so they do, say you can't afford it. You costs. can't. Yeah. You cannot. Plus, don't. I mean, it's just. You, you, it's, don't be stupid and like you can harm other people. Yeah. That's ir- That's not being responsible for sure. No. No. And with that, Mike, let's end the show. All right. Goodbye. See you. If you would like to tell your story on 2Ds and an F, email us at 2Ds and an F podcast at gmail.com. That's T W O D S A N D A N F podcast at gmail.com. For episode segments, extras, and upcoming guest interviews, check out 2Ds and an F podcast pages on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Full length episodes are available on YouTube, Spotify, and just about everywhere other podcasts are found. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The 2Ds and the Net Podcast is a Dunn Sound production.